In this video, we'll create a multi-session Windows desktop and app pool, add it to a pool group, and then entitle end users. We'll also enable access through the Workspace ONE Intelligent Hub. Start out in the Horizon Universal Console and see that we already have created and published an OS image of a Windows 10 multi-session desktop. Click Resources, Pools in the Navigation pane and click Start. Give the pool a name and then for pool type, I'll use multi-session because it has mostly the same options as single session, but also additional options for multi-session. For these destination settings, Site, Horizon Edge, and Provider, I have only one of each setup, so those are the ones you see. I configured these when preparing to deploy an Edge, as shown in other videos. By the way, whenever I mention other videos, I mean videos from the playlist linked in the YouTube card. We're not going to use availability zones. For the image generation type, I'll use V2 because I've only created one image and it is V2. If I select V1, there's no image in the drop-down list. And I created one marker when I created that image, so here it is. Confirm that you have a Windows license. Now for filters. I haven't created any tags, but if you do, you can then filter on the tag. You can also filter on all these other things, series, GPU, and disk type. For VM model, this is the setting I chose when I created the image. For disk type, here are all the choices. I'll leave the default. For disk size, you can go from 127 all the way to 4,095 gigs. And we're not going to bother encrypting the disks. For machine identity, we already registered an AD domain, as shown in another video. And the computer's OU we already configured when we registered, although it looks like you could change that here. We'll have our VMs get provisioned on demand. For the minimums and maximums, I'll leave these defaults, though I will add to the number of sessions allowed per VM. VM name prefix will then have numbers added to the prefix for each VM in the pool. Then create a local admin username and password, just like you do when creating the image. Remember, Azure does not let you use the name administrator or guest. Next. For the virtual network, we'll use the default and the subnet for desktops. Next. Love Dynamic Environment Manager, but it's beyond the scope of this demo. And save. Here I'll click Add to Pool Group and give it a name. The display name is the name that end users will see in their desktop and app selector or in the Intelligent Hub. For pool group type, I'm going to select Publish Desktop and Application rather than one or the other so that I can show you the options for both. Now when we created and published the image, we also scanned for applications, and that's why we have this nice list here. Select the ones you want to publish, and you can change the display name that end users see. I'll select a few and add Published App to the display name. There's lots of apps, and these are just the ones that were in the OS out of the box. Next. The default protocol is going to be Blast. For preferred client type, Horizon Client, but browser is fine too. Scope, I only have one site, so it doesn't matter whether I choose any site or restrict to one site. Affinity, I'll leave the default, nearest, but you can restrict to the home site. I want to use SSO, so I'll turn that on. I configured that previously, as shown in another video. Power Management Type, I'll let you read the tooltip and hope you can figure out how that would apply to your situation. For more information about all these pool group settings, see the documentation topic, Create a Multi-Session Pool Group. Power management can be optimized for performance or cost or balance between the two. For minimum number of VMs, I'll just say 50%. Power off protect time, leave 30 minutes. Now let me add a schedule so you can see what all the options are. You can add more than one, so give this one a name, Select which days you want the schedule to run. I'll have this run all day, but you can customize the time period. I think for days, why don't I just do the weekend? Minimum VMs, I'll say 50%. Add. Okay, load balancing. 
We're just going to leave all these defaults, but the options are explained in that documentation topic I mentioned earlier. Rolling maintenance. This is specifically for multi-session VMs, which don't get refreshed like a floating single session pool. I think we'll turn this on and I'll leave the defaults for everything else. Save. Now we'll just keep on going and entitle the pool group. Here's a list of the multi-session desktops and app pools. Select and click Next. For user types, first I'll do a user group. Start typing to find the user group and select it. Then I'll do a user or two. Select Users and start typing and selecting. OK, click Save. OK, if we go over to the pool, I'll show you that if you had created the pool but not the pool group yet, you could select the pool and then there's an Add to Pool Group button. It's dimmed right now because I've already added this pool to a group. You can add a pool to only one group. Click the pool name and go to its details page. And you can see what VMs there are. No sessions yet, but you can also conveniently see the logs. And you can go to the pool groups. If we wanted to entitle more people, just select the group and click the entitlement button. You could click the add button to add more pools to this group too. Click the name of the pool group to go to its details page. You can review all its settings. And the Pools tab lists pools and lets you add more. The Application tab also lets you add more of the scanned apps. Entitlements, of course, shows the users and groups. We don't have any sessions yet. If you go to Desktop and App Catalog, you can also find the pool group there and entitle the desktops to people. And an Applications tab also lets you entitle people. Now go to Integrations, click Manage on the Intelligent Hub tile, and enable the Workspace ONE Intelligent Hub. In order for this to work, you have to have set up Workspace ONE Access as the identity provider, as shown in another video. At this time for this feature, only Windows, Mac, Linux, and browser clients are supported, not mobile. Click Save. And now the desktops and apps are available to end users through the Horizon Client, a browser, or the Workspace ONE Intelligent Hub. For more Horizon Cloud technical resources, be sure to visit techzone.omnisa.com.